What's the word, y'all? Another instant reaction to today's games. Um, I guess this game's technically not over. The Suns are losing by a bunch of points with about three minutes ago. They calling the flagrant foul on Josh Okogie. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to to talk about this. And you know what? Maybe ten minutes ago, when I was thinking about recording this video, the things that I cared about, the things I want to talk about, I had a hundred bars for the Phoenix Suns. Because if everything goes the way it is right now and they don't go on some crazy run, they're going to be down 3-0 in this series. And then I changed my mind. I don't have 100 bars. I got a few, but I don't hunt them. I am just confused. Um, I guess this team is who I thought they were. And I gave them the benefit of the doubt going into this playoff series. Um, even when you look at my prediction video, I was saying that I don't feel good. I haven't felt good about the Phoenix Suns all season long, but hell, they have Kevin Durant and Devin Booker on the team, arguably the two best players in the series potentially. So I'm just kind of going to side with that. Um, but they just showed me three games in a row that they are the team I thought they were. Maybe wor they are worse than the team I thought they were. And, and I thought they were a solid team, not a contender, but at least a solid team. And they came out in this game. But they were down 0-2. And I will remind you, a 3-0 series lead has not been turned around in NBA history just yet. It could happen, but just it hasn't happened just yet. So, this is as urgent of a game as you can imagine. St statistically speaking, if we lose tonight, the series is over. And Lord knows we don't have a solid track record over the last couple years of, of going into games in our home court when it's an elimination game. And they came out and put up an egg. And I was just so very disappointed. It took three and a half quarters for them to look like they care about basketball. Three and a half quarters. It took Josh Okogie coming to the game <laughs> for them to care about basketball. Um, and, and the reason why I'm not going to get them again 100 bars is because I just think the Minnesota Timberwolves are just that much better. The, the LA Lakers are also down 3-0. That one is not surprising to me because the, the, the Denver Nuggets are just that much better than everybody. Maybe the Timberwolves are just that much better than the Suns. And I cannot wait for this Suns or this uh, Minnesota Timberwolves versus Denver Nuggets series that's going to be starting relatively soon. That, that one's going to be amazing. Before this game started, um, I made a tweet that said something along the lines of Kevin Durant and Devin Booker have to combine for 40 points. Because if you look at their history and their, pl their playoffs together, right? They have the one series win against the Clippers where Paul George didn't play and then Kawhi Leonard only played two games in that series. But if you look at it, when those two dudes put up, si they put up 60 plus points a game in the ones that they won. And then they went to the next series against the Denver Nuggets and the two games they won, those dudes put up an average of like 75 points together. And in a win or go home game, in my mind, they absolutely absolutely needed to go out there and go nuclear. Kevin Durant had 25 4 and 4. And Devin Booker had 20 21 8 and 3. Collectively, this is how many shots they shot. That's just not enough. I just think that's not enough. And I'm, again, I'm not giving them 100 bars because that's par partially because of the Minnesota Timberwolves and trust me Wolves fans, this uh, this video is not going to be strictly on the Suns cuz I have to give you all the flowers in the world, but I got to start off right here. Um and part of that is just because the 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 Minnesota Timberwolves defense is as good as anything. I mean, it was the best in basketball all season long. But for frame of reference, this is how many shots they took. And, oh, I guess Kevin Durant just took another one. He missed it, but he just took another one. But these, I'm just looking at these two dudes. Um, Bradley Beal had a good statistical game. I don't feel like it had that crazy of an impact. At least he hit a couple threes down the stretch in this fourth quarter. I mean, I think they went 33 minutes without a three. And most of these points have come since then. Anyway. In the game, and now it was an overtime game. I do want to say it was an overtime game, so we've got five extra minutes. But in this one game, Chris Middleton shot 29 shots. And in this game, uh, Tyrese Halliburton shot 22. In the game that was just 101 to 90, we saw Luka Doncic put up 25 shots. And I remind you, I, I want to just show this again of how many shots we got of the two best players potentially in this series. It, they didn't play with any urgency. And that's just, I would be frustrated. There was a time where they were down by 20 points. Frank Vogel calls timeout, and, you know, they always do these cutaways of like, oh, it's the team's in a huddle, it's the team in a huddle. And then as they break out of the huddle, Bradley Beal is talking to Isaiah Thomas, and they're down by 20 points in a must-win game, and he's laughing and giggling and smiling. I'm not a fan of the team, and that pissed me off. Now, I couldn't imagine how the Suns fans could have saw, saw it. There was also a time where the Minnesota Timberwolves went on a run, and Frank Vogel did what most coaches would do. Let me call a timeout. And out of the timeout, they got a 24-second shot clock violation. 
It is crazy. Now let's transition to talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves because, man, three games in a row where they just play phenomenal basketball. We, we talk about some of the best players and the best scorers in basketball, and Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, and Kevin Durant being on lock, I would say. By players, like like Carl Anthony Towns is not known as a defensive-minded player. Over the last two games, I have been so very impressed with his play. And one of the reasons why I guess I'm, I'm upset with the Suns in this one is because you saw Rudy Gobert in foul trouble. You saw Mike Conley in foul trouble. Nas Reed was in foul trouble. Carl Anthony Towns were in foul trouble. All these guys were in foul trouble early in this game. And like, oh, this is a game you must win because, hell, uh, Cal Anderson ha didn't play in game number two. And he has to play in the first quarter of this game because... Well, they got no more bodies. They can't. They can't risk anything. And the Suns still ended up losing this one. Anthony Edwards continues to show you why he is uh, a star, not just in the making. He is a star actively. I think they said this is seven thirty point playoff game already. And Lord knows he ain't even played that many playoff games. He's been phenomenal. Oh, they just pulled the starters. Uh, it just it just shifted in front of me. Luca Garza is now in the game. So shout out to them. This is a guaranteed win. I guess the Kevin to write them off the court. Yes, they are. So yeah, they both they have conceded and now. Uh, we got uh, the big body Dave Variety in the game and stuff. But this was uh, another master class for guys like Rudy Gobert as well. I said this was a legacy series for Rudy Gobert, and I, I could not, I, I guess, expect it more from him. There are plenty of times in this one when it's him on the island versus Kevin Durant. He stood his own. And Kevin Durant, again, is one of the greatest scorers of all time, so he will get got. Rudy Gobert did get got a few times in this game. But there are also times when he just picked the pocket. Played the passing lanes. There was maybe three baskets in this game where Rudy Gobert is on a break by himself because he had a phenomenal defensive possession that led to a lay or travel that <laughs> travel lay <laughs> earlier that first quarter. Um, I under I, even though I again been so high on this team all year long. I made the video before the season started. Hell, they were my number one most watched team in the NBA. Um, the NBA recap thing. I am still impressed with what they did. And one thing I kept thinking about throughout the course of this game is you cannot out-talent a good game plan. You cannot out-talent a team with mental toughness. You cannot out-talent a team like this. And in my mind, going into the series, the Suns had the talent. And that was enough. When they ain't had a game plan, that was, that was finching them. They ain't have the will to win. I mean, you can't you can't give me three minutes of the Minnesota Timberwolves not playing their heart out. That was multiple three minute stretches for the Suns throughout this throughout the series so far. This was an amazing series, and and I I'm just I'm saying it like it's over because it's a 3-0 series. Like it has never been done before. I don't know if they like the Suns might go out there and get a game, maybe make it interesting, but I'm just. It's weird because we're going into a second round that will not feature a LeBron James. It will not feature Steph Curry, who didn't even make the goddamn playoffs. It will not feature a Kevin Durant. It might not feature a clip uh, a Kawhi Leonard because of the way they just saw, they played today. And we're going to get to these other games too, do not get me wrong. But it's the one that's fresh on my mind. I want to give flowers to Nikhil Alexander-Walker. He had, what, four threes in the third quarter. That was one of the, the stretches that really broke this game over. Nikhil Alexander-Walker has been great all season long. So... Um, shout out to the Minnesota Timberwolves. I cannot wait to see where Chris Finch is going to throw at Nikola Jokic because I think that that's one of the teams that can give the Nuggets some run. But matchup based, matchup based. Now the Nuggets are the best team in basketball. Like you see it time and time again. Like the Lakers are down 3-0 because the Nuggets just like, hey, you think you're in this game or you're not. You up by 10 points where you're not. Aaron Gordon yesterday had uh, eight, eight second chance points in the first half to keep the game close and then it just switched on and then uh, Michael Porter Jr. hit a million shots in a row and just like that this game that looked like the Lakers might be able to take to take to make the series two to one it was over with just like that and LeBron is saying it's just basketball which is a quote he said in 2017 but right now it hits different because he's about to be 40 and they're down 3-0 <laughs> it's different now Bron and I guess there are some people speculating on Twitter that he was mocking someone else I, I don't know but either way it just it hit different and the game before this we saw the Dallas Mavericks end up getting a game um a win first game at home for them uh retaining home court advantage another grinding out game between these two teams and i was just impressed overall especially in that first half we saw a ton of luka Doncic just dominating this game with the the pick and roll with Derek lively where it felt like the clippers had no game plan where i think they had three to four lobs in just the first half uh Kyrie irvin had another first half where he didn't do a goddamn thing and in the second half he's like oh yeah i, I remember i'm i'm him P.J. Washington got a little scuffle with Russell Westbrook, who had a horrendous shooting night and then ultimately got ejected. The Clippers also played with no urgency. Now, part of that is Kawhi Leonard just hasn't looked like a real NBA player. He set out a, an 11-minute stretch in this game. 
11 minute stretch is insane. And that's just because it, I'm sure it's the knee. It's got to be the knee. He had some times in game number two after the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, he got a few steals and he looked like a normal version of himself. Even in this game, he got the alley oop slam early. I'm like, okay, he looks okay. But the fact that Tyron Lue has his best player in the in the series or in this team sit out 11 minutes tells you everything you really need to know. Paul George put up a stinker. Um, and the only people that felt like they came to play today was Norman Powell and then like the first half of James Harden and Zubac, who you could argue Zubac has been the second best clipper this entire playoff series. Shout out to the Dallas Mavericks is again, they sit in that chair and I, I've said it before and I'll eat my words from what I said months ago. I didn't think it was really that much of a possibility they'd be able to build a really, really good defensive team around the backcourt of Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving. But because Luka Doncic is completely locked in, there were multiple possessions in this game where Luka Doncic was in that chair and making the right reads defensively. And Kyrie Irving, um, in game number two, played James Harden very well. And there were many moments in this game as well where he played uh, great defense. So I'm excited to see what happens next. The series is far from over. It's not like the other series that's 3 But the game of the night... The game of the night was was the Bucks versus Pacers. Game of the night. This might be game of the game of the season. Game of the playoffs for sure. I would be surprised if we had another game in the playoffs that was this good. With cash money, Chris Middleton hit two shots to send it to overtime, and then to maybe send it to a second overtime. Um, in this one, I honestly do believe the Bucks played the better game overall. But that first quarter, man, that first quarter, it is so hard to come back with something like this against a team like the Indiana Pacers. And, of course, overtime saw, um, saw Andrew Nimhar get a million offensive rebounds, and that was a lot. And then Tyrese Halliburton hit the game winner. Shout-out to the guy. But I believe that in the first quarter, the, the Bucks had it so that the they were trying to match Pacers basketball. And the one thing that the Minnesota the, the Memphis <laughs> the Memphis the Milwaukee Bucks don't want to do is try to match the Pacers because they don't match their athleticism and they don't match their speed. But in that first quarter it was all Pacers basketball. And I thought in that second quarter through the fourth quarter the Bucks were able to retain some of that and say, hey no, we're gonna play our style of play. It's gonna be Chris Middleton tough shot making. It's gonna be Damian Little who struggled today but hit some big shots down the stretch. I think he scored 10 straight points at one point it's going to be our style of play and that's how we got to overtime and in overtime they just missed too many shots and then of course Tyrese hit the big shot of the game but this game is everything you could imagine I know Pacers fans are super happy that they did not waste the, the Miles Turner game with 29 and 9 again Nimhard was phenomenal throughout the course of this one again probably the game of the playoffs hey let me know what you think about all of this uh it's very late at night I let me get to bed